Hello, good day. Welcome to Global AgroConnect podcast with Aka Joshua Salvation, the Agro King. Today, I'm going to be talking of, um, about a very brief topic. We actually have um, an ebook that is out currently. was launched on um, January 2021 on snail farming. It's titled My Snail Farming Guide. Now, this ebook is um, section nine design to help young people get into snail farming with as low as um, a very minute amount of money. Now, when we talk about snail farming, there are several things that we stated in our e book that um, could actually actually help people, help youth, and as well as help other farmers improve their methods of growing their snails. And among such is um, the African snail species. Now, there are basically three main African snail species, which are the um, Akatina marginata breed, that is um, considered to be the best for commercial snail farmers, and um, it lays between five eggs to 15 eggs per clutch. Now, three times a year. Now, snails lay each time it, um, whenever it rains, okay? They, they actually lay during raining seasons. And if you want a snail to lay during dry seasons, make sure there is source of water um, in the snail pen that uh, probably showers on them or something like that. I think that is um, actually very predominant in um, the extensive farming method. Um, all this were actually explained in the ebook. There. Now, the second um, snail species, um, the Akatina, Akatina um, breed. This is actually second large um, snail breed. Okay, basically lays between 400 to 600 eggs per clutch, but that's actually bigger than the last one I'm going to call now, which is the Akatina Fulica breed. That's actually the smallest of them all, and this is actually the one we are used to. Now, aside being in the market, they are everywhere. You go to the bushes, you see them, you walk by the roadside, the gutters, you meet meet them there so those ones that are actually smaller those are the akatina fulica breed now the biggest of them all is akatina marginata breed okay those are actually sold at a reasonable price i think i mean my school we sell that for 700 naira per one yes as much as 700 naira per snail now to tell you how um how uh how, how, how would i actually put this how beneficial and how um income breeding that snail farming business is okay now this second topic we discussed there was um factors to consider before citing a snail farm first is the weather condition second is the location um snail farm or snails thrive better in cold environment cold environment especially places that don't have that um, wind cannot gain easy access to them. So places where your snails are away from direct contact contact with the wind, places where they, they, they are shaded probably with trees, that's why most people prefer getting plantains and other um, cover crops, that's trees, shady trees, for snails, it actually helps them a lot, and it actually helps their breeding and their feeding. Now, when they are shaded, they can feed as as much as possible, and they can grow. They grow as fast as they feed, okay? And snails actually get mature within six, eight months to one year, okay? Let's just say eight months to one year, you should have your mature breeded snails, okay? You have mature breeded snails. Now, the second factor to consider that we discussed there was um, bloating. Now, um, bloating occurs when your snails are fed with contaminated water. Now, um, that, that's why um, in the ebook we are encouraged to give snails clean water. Even the food you are giving them should also be clean. It should be vo- um, devoid of um, dirt. Okay? Since we, we shouldn't actually overlook, oh, we pick them in the bush and stay in the bushes. No. If you notice, every animal you read domestically um, actually can easily be affected by diseases. Yes, if you rear animals domestically, they don't have access to the herbs to get from the bushes, they don't have access to the wild, and then um, any little thing can actually affect them seriously. But those that are in the wild can easily run for um, harsh weather conditions to places where they can get, um, they can hide from. But if they are in an enclosed system and you don't take proper care of them, you are actually putting them in danger. So. They should be giving clean food, clean water, as well as um, proper care. You should take care of them adequately. That adequate care really matters a whole lot. Now, among such, we discussed several other factors. I'm going to end with these two. Now, the next 
thing we actually had have on that ebook is um snail farming systems that is the intensive snail farming system the extensive snail farming system and the semi-intensive now the intensive snail farming system happens to do with deal with rearing your snails in um probably a bow um a tire or something like that an enclosed cage where you take care of them there now when we talk about semi-intensive semi-intensive it actually has to do with partially wild and partially um home um red snails i don't know how to explain better but um it's actually it's not all about the enclosement of the snails in a particular pen probably their pen is enlarged and then um, they actually have access to probably creating that natural environment for them that is the semi intensive system that extensive system has to do with and um, putting your snails out in the wild now most people have done have created greenhouses as large as um, one to two plots of land and with these plots of land they've been able to create large greenhouses where they plant plantains and other trees um as well as tomatoes and things that actually attract or keep snails in good condition they've actually put in blocks bricks and several things that the snails can easily hide to um, shield from um, the harsh weather conditions and with, with, with doing this they've actually created um, a natural habitat for the snails and those snails thrive faster the only disadvantage there is it's very difficult to um, collect the eggs of the snails which actually makes it um, makes the eggs prone to being eaten prone to cannibalism by their parented snails okay when they lack calcium if you don't know snails actually predate they feed on their um, young ones as well as the eggs okay so um that is the only disadvantage of that <clears throat> now talking about one other thing we discussed too um feeding we discussed about feeding of snails what are the kinds of feed that your snails love most now for people who don't know snails love lettuce and watermelon like seriously speaking snail can eat other things yes but they love lettuce and watermelon when you give it to them from experience they can actually they will thank you for giving it to them you will see them large quantity they will consume it like it's actually very juicy yeah. but if you give them other feed they consume it in smaller quantities now um but they, we actually have like food that are not good for snails too and to just say that in one word sugary food sugary food your oranges no snails do not love that they might consume it but it has um bad effect on them um also biscuits most of us who are fond of giving our snails biscuits they'll consume it but it also has um bad effect on them so sugary food should be taken off of snails it should be fed to snails better fit them with vegetables and fruits okay we love that a lot but not oranges now and then we also discussed about hatching what are ways to hatch your snails and we um, designed steps steps step by step approach to hatching your snails so far i've been able to hatch um snails over like seven eight times for the ones we have in the house and the snails we have in the house we have the akatina fully cabbage that's the smallest bead size and um, we actually i actually call them test bodies because i use them to um all everything i practice every, everything i teach i practice in them they are not so much here yeah, but whatever i practice um Whatever I teach, I know I've practiced it and I know how it works, the effect of it on the snail. So basically that's why I got those um, breeds of snail. I got just a little quantity, learned how to hatch their eggs and I hatched the seven sets successfully. So I can easily tell you ways in which you can hatch your eggs and get successful output from your snails. Um, and it might interest you to know that snails are actually hermaphrodites. For those who do not know, if you're, if you're hearing or if you haven't read about snails, they are actually hermaphrodites. Yeah, they possess both male and female reproductive organs. And I've actually seen their male reproductive organs severally. Um, when I was actually wondering, okay, if they have male and female reproductive organs, why don't I actually see them? But later, I've been privileged to see. <laughs> I call it a privilege, yes, to see the male and um, the male reproductive organ. And um, I haven't actually seen them eat, but I, I I wish to actually monitor them closely to see them do that. But basically, it's a night nice to do that. Uh, I can't actually sit to them at night for I free. I find out one day because I love to learn and learn and learn more about it. So um snails are hermaphrodites, but do you know that despite being hermaphrodites, snails cannot mate themselves. They are hermaphrodites, yes, possessing male and female organs, but one snail can never reproduce. You can keep one snail for ten years, it will remain there. You will still have one snail. 
and it will never reproduce but once you add another snail to it they will start reproducing so i tell people if you want a snail as a pet get just one but if you want snail for a farm start from two <laughs> so if you, if you actually want to increase the numbers of what you have make them two but if you just want one as a pet get just one because once snails are in two they can actually reproduce they are hermaphrodites yes but they need to also mate with one another to reproduce now when two snails meet one another they both of them lay eggs so so they meet one another and they exude these things i've actually discussed and several more loads loads more even hibernation that's the lack of water um for snails and i you know when um, snails lack water they um secrete um slimes to shield them from losing more water and during that hibern um, hibernation process or that hibernation um time the time when they are under hibernation they lose weight because they don't eat so they are, they are all about just preserving their lives with the little strength they have so all this and several more where they have been outlined in the um, my easy guide snail farming my easy guide snail farming so if you are interested in getting access to the book you can easily comment here then um i will actually tell you what to do or better still reach out to me on um plus two three four eight zero eight five seven six seven six two one that's my whatsapp contact i repeat plus two three four eight zero eight five seven six seven six two one now if you want to keep getting more interesting content like this or getting notifications about our content please and please we need you to subscribe you have to subscribe to our channel and as well as please like this video if you actually gain value do well to like this um, podcast do well to like this podcast um this is actually a short podcast compared to the ones we